morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to have people in the building this morning. A small number of you who are allowed to be here, and for all of those who are joining us from your lounge room or bedroom, if you've just woken up, we welcome you too. It's fantastic to come together this morning, wherever you are, as Central Baptist, and worship the Lord and lift Him high this morning. It's been a different time, but we are excited and expectant about what God's going to do in this place, what God's going to do in your living room as you come to worship with us this morning. I'm going to start by reading from Psalm 34. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Let's remember that as we come to worship the Lord together this morning. Will you stand, those of you who are with us? Welcome to stand at room two. Let's bless the Lord in every circumstance.
uh, from this time of isolation and separation. We're preparing for the official announcement of restrictions being lifted um, over the next couple of weeks so that we can meet together in greater numbers. Not because we're sick of it, but because it's safe to do so. Maybe some of us are sick of it. <laughs> yeah. Today we have um, a few extra people helping in the service, adding their voices to our worship this morning. Hopefully it's a little more like normal. I hope and pray um, that it's an encouragement to you and it makes you feel and know that you are a part of the body of Christ here in this gathering of us together in your homes and the few people that are here. Thank God, thank goodness Jesus is with us in every circumstance and place that we may be. Let's worship our amazing God today in spirit and in truth by his word, in song, in prayer, and in one voice. But first, we have a message from our esteemed elder brother. Andrew, you don't have to build me up like that. It's, it's um, nerve-wracking. You can live up to it. Anyway, um, some of you may have seen in the newsletter there was a letter from the elders and we thought it really important at this time to uh, be giving you some feedback on some of the things that you may not have been aware of that have been ticking along behind the scenes. But firstly, a big well done <coughs> to everyone for navigating through this COVID-19. For all of us, it's been a journey and I think it's probably taught us things about ourselves that we've seen that have been good and it's also taught us things that have probably been a bit confronting and um, kind of been hard to kind of deal with but hopefully we're working through those things but the thing that's been so encouraging to me is the fact that through all the changes that have been going on God is our strength, God is our comfort, he's our refuge, he's faithful, he never leaves us or forsakes us, and he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that is really comforting when things around us are very varied and changing. For me this week, we got all the children back to school, all the staff back, and that was just so good to be able to celebrate that. And likewise, today, we've got uh, some familiar faces scattered through the congregation, which is lovely. And we're really looking forward to that day when we're all going to be back together. And boy, are we going to lift the roof off when that happens. Um, <coughs> while um, everyone's been going through COVID-19, the eldership have been meeting weekly using Zoom. Got to give Andrew a lot of credit here for setting up not only the Zoom meetings and things like that, but also what he's done here with setting up this, this streaming, taping. He has put in huge hours each week to bring this to us. And um, he's only working part time, but I'm sure he's full time and a half at the moment with the way he's been navigating through this but that has helped to bring us you know that sense of connectedness throughout all this and so we owe you andrew a huge thank you so so we've been meeting um weekly to kind of just discern what also god is saying to us through this time and also to make sure that we're able to bring God's scripture, um, song, um, communion, and Sunday school activities to you all and to the children. And that, that has been maintained, may not have been maintained in the same way, but it has been maintained. And another big thank you we need to give to all those people that have been involved in um, participating to bring all these things to us. 
the really encouraging thing has been that we've been able to uh, have new people participate in ways that probably wouldn't have happened otherwise, which has just been so lovely. And so there's a message in there, <coughs> excuse me, for all of us, and that is we don't want people to just go back to what was the old way. God's doing something new here amongst us, and we don't want to have any spectators. We want to all be playing a part and a role. So we will come out the other side of this, different, changed, but hopefully growing, um, and being able to apply new things to this church and what God's wanting us to do. Um, during the, there's ways, look, already I've been encouraged that in that newsletter article that I had a few days ago, I talked about ways of stepping up and already we've got three to four volunteers that you can't see it all behind the camera now, but there's people here learning the ropes about how to take over when Andrew is and Dawn are going to take a well-earned three-week holiday. So to those people that have stepped into those roles, thank you for doing that. Um, we will look forward to seeing everyone again soon. Um, there's a big thank you too in terms of the finances that's been ticking along. We were a bit unsure about how COVID-19 might impact on the church finances. But many people have gone online with that, and for some people that's a pretty steep learning curve. I know I've had a few steep learning curves getting, doing online stuff with bringing messages to students. So I understand that sometimes those things aren't easy, but that has helped us maintain a good level of, um, you know, just coping with the, the weekly expenses that we have and the, uh, and the mission and all those kind of aspects to the church that we're wanting to fulfill. And that's happened, so a big thank you for making that happen. Now, a few months ago, we, re we were given a substantial donation, which has meant that during this time, we've also been looking at how we might be able to, you know, do some capital expenditure work that might assist the church going forward. And so what the eldership have, have decided on is that this money, this substantial one-off donation, which doesn't come out of the normal budget, um, will be set aside to purchase over 100 chairs. Um, and that will give us more flexibility more ability to be able to do lots of different things, um, small group things, also configure the church possibly a bit differently. Um, Bill Bruce has been a very important player in that, looking for you know good specials that have been on, and there have been a number of specials that have been on, and so we've decided to move on that. So within the next month or two, you might see a bit of furniture reshuffling going on around here. I guess that's, that's the, I just want to finish with this really in that um, God is wanting to change us. God is wanting to, us to do new things. That doesn't mean we get rid of all the old, but he's wanting to bring a new fresh wine to this church. And so um, we want everyone to be part of that. So please, Pray for this church. Pray for what you can do to contribute to make this church and help this church in the ways that you see that God, with the skills that God's given you, um, so that we can go forward. And we look forward to that day when we're all back together. Amen. Thanks for listening. Amen. And I think we've got a uh, clip now for the children. Thanks a lot. Yes, we've got a, a chip, uh, clip for the kids and Anna's go, a little while later, Anna's going to lead us in prayer and Jeff's going to bring us a Bible reading this morning. So, let's worship.
This is Jesus. Hey, oh. Son of God. While Jesus was on earth, he healed many people from their sickness, performed many miracles by calming storms and even raised people from the dead. But some people did not like what Jesus was doing. And they put him to death. He died on a cross and was buried in a tomb. For three days, Jesus' body laid in that tomb, and it seemed that there was no hope. But very early on Sunday morning, the woman who cared for Jesus went to go visit his body, found that his tomb was empty, and that he was no longer there. For he was risen. He was alive. Whether in our words, 
our thoughts or our actions, Lord. Lord, you are compassionate and gracious. Help us to live under the authority of your word, Lord, and be res responsive to your word and your voice. Dear Lord, we bring before you Heather Ellis mom, Gwen, who will be going in for an operation tomorrow. We pray that you will remove any fear or anxiety from her, Lord. Fill her with peace that you alone can give her. Give her confidence in the power of your grace. And also, you are in control over the surgical team. That she may put her complete trust in your care and love for her. May her recovery be swift, her strength be renewed, and her health be restored. And also bless Heather, Lord, at this time of Gwen's needs of her care, love, and support. We pray, we place all this in your hands, Lord. You are the divine healer. Heavenly Father, we lift up all who are feeling depressed, whether in our community, in our country, or throughout the world, Lord. Lonely, not only depressed, Lord, lonely, financially unstable, or hurting in any way, burdened with worries, fears, doubts, and troubles. We ask that you will keep them covered with the blood of Jesus, embrace them with your tranquility and love. Help them to turn their worry time to prayer time, Lord. Break every chain of negative thoughts and speak positivity into their life. Fill them with your peace, which passes all understanding. Renew their spirituality and emotionality. Give them strength, hope, and confidence to endure these situations and to find the blessings and lessons that it contains. Prepare them to meet the constant struggles of life with deeper faith and trust in you. In their loneliness, be their consolation. In their anxiety, be their hope. In their darkness, be their light. As in Proverbs 3, 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will direct your path. Father God, we ask you to speak into the hearts of the unsaved ones too, Lord, who are out there, Lord, whether in our family, our colleagues, in our community, many out in the world at this time, Lord. It's a time to save the unsafe, Lord. Put a new spirit in them, O oh Lord. Remove the blinders from their eyes. Take out their stony, stubborn heart and give them a tender, responsive heart, Lord. Please send laborers from different sources across their path. Let them see you are there for them, Lord, wherever they are. Please a hedge of protection around them so that the ungodly influence allowed around them will depart. Lord, please break any chains, strongholds that they have. Free them from Satan's influence over their mind, will, and emotions. We pray that they would be convicted by the Holy Spirit, that they would have your attitude towards sins. Gracious, gracious God, God of power and might. The whole world is at your command. We pray that, we pray for the recovery of our world from this pandemic. Help us to transform uncertainty and fear into love and care. Oh Lord, trusting in the power of your Holy Spirit, we pray for the sick and those who are caring for them. For the researchers who are working to find medicine and vaccine. For those who must make difficult decisions in the best interests of those they serve. 
for international cooperation in the service of justice and peace, and for all spiritual leadership that is faithful to your will and Lord. And we ask you for your power of the Holy Spirit with them, Lord. Almighty Father, when evil darkens our world, give us light. When despair numbs our soul, give us hope. When we stumble and fall, lift us up. When doubts assail us, give us faith. When, when nothing seems sure, give us trust. When ideals fade, give us vision. When we lose our way, be our guide, that we may find serenity in your presence and purpose in doing your will, Lord. Father, you tell us the victory is ours. Amen. We thank you, Lord. You tell us that we can do things through you. You tell us to have hope in you, and we will not be disappointed. We just have to remember this, that your timing is not our timing, and you do not always give us what we seek. But you see the bigger picture, and you're going to give us something better in our mind that we can't see now. And we must trust you and put our focus in you. May we point our way to you, Lord. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're just going to sing a new song now, and just a little bit on what Anna just prayed at the, at the ending there, there's some lines in this song that just says, even when I don't see you, even when I don't see it, you're working, and even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop working. So we're going to sing that now, and uh, I just thought it was really uh, appropriate that that's essentially what Anna just prayed. That at this time, sometimes God's got a big plan than what we can understand or comprehend. So let's not lose faith in Him. And I think this is, um, I just had a sense as, as we were praying, something we talked about earlier in the year is sharing testimonies. And I can tell you what, in this time there is a whole heap of testimonies that we can share. So in a few weeks, months, whenever it is, when we can all get together, um, I just want to encourage us again. In this time, think about the amazing things that God's been doing. Look past the frustration or anything, and let's think about those testimonies. And let's get excited about sharing about them when we're all together again. Some of us are here now, but when we're all together again, let's share these testimonies. Because it's going to be powerful to see what he's done in this time, and it's going to be very encouraging. So. Thanks, Thanks. I find it interesting. Song, but that's so good. God, God knows what he's doing. No, no, it's not bad at all. Um, another thing with this song, it is a new song. It's it's easy. It's uh, a lot of declarations in this song. And um, as Anna was praying too, I was picking up on the names of God that she was using or, or um, characteristics of God that she was describing. And some and, and this song, in, in the chorus of it, it says, He is the way maker. And in this time, you know, when everything in our world has been changing around us, God is unchanging, but He is so much more than we can imagine. He is our way maker. He's a miracle worker. He's the promise keeper and He's the light in the darkness. But He's also our God Almighty. He's our peace. He's our shepherd. He's our defender. He's our stronghold. He's our strength. He's our saviour. And as we declare it this morning together, who he is, we know too that we are gathered together and he is in this place. And isn't that wonderful, amazing? So I hope you'll join with us when you feel comfortable too. Um, but if not, just uh, let the words let the words be a declaration in your heart. So if you'd like to stand, please do so.
morning, church. It's great to see you. I know that many of you are at home with Landrum or with your phone, enjoying this time of worship. Special thanks to all of those who are part of the worship team this morning, uh, those who are working behind the scenes as well. Uh, thank you to Anna, particularly, uh, and to Rowan. Rowan um, sharing before about some of the things we're wanting to do. Uh, we also want to uh, give you the opportunity, if you want to contribute to uh, some of those capital uh, changes, uh, particularly those seats, um, if you want to make a donation as well, that um, would be helpful as well. One day we'd also like to uh, do something with this carpet as well. And that's something to think about for the future. God's always doing new things. And even though we, we don't know and understand what he's doing sometimes, it's exciting just to wait uh, for what he's uh, doing and what he's been doing behind the scenes for us to discover. And I think we're going to discover many things in the months ahead. God's always um, speaking to us. Uh, got something fresh to say and he often always does that through his word as well. So let me share uh, the word of God with you this morning from Luke chapter 24, verses 44 to 53. Jesus said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And you are my witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what the Father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And while he blessed them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. And then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. Andrew's about to open this in God's word. Let's just pray for Andrew at this moment. Father, we thank you for all your gifts to us and we thank you especially for Andrew. Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit would guide him now as he opens up your word to us. May we hear much more than just Andrew. May we just hear you speaking to us. Open our hearts to what you want to say. And then give to us the faith and the obedience and the willingness to put into what you, you say to us into action. Father, not only bless Andrew at this time, but each day may you be his not only physical and mental and emotional strength, but especially that you will bless him spiritually and use him to build us and to encourage us and to work with us as we seek to bring Jesus' love and healing to our world. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for um, that introduction, Jeff, and also for bringing us the word this morning. So who gets a YouTube link that I send out each week? A few people, a few hands, okay. How good is that to be sent a link? Links are made for connection. A YouTube link gets you straight to the video that you want to watch, straight to the website that you want to visit. A Facebook live stream link will get you to our church service. You probably used one today if you tapped on your notifications that Central Baptist was now live. You actually tapped on a link. A Zoom meeting link will get you straight into the meeting that you want to be a part of. They are communication links. How about other sorts of links? The link in a chain. Now that's, that's an old fashioned link. Well, it's not old fashioned, we, we use them all the time. It's a physical link. Physical links are designed to keep you connected physically to something. My boat anchor is connected um, to a series of links 
galvanised iron ones to stop it from getting carried away by the tide and just drifting onto the rocks to destruction if the wind or the tide picks it up and decides to take it that way. The links in a jewellery chain may be made of gold or silver or some other precious metal, but it will save a piece of valuable jewellery from getting lost if something goes wrong. These ones are more physical type links. However, in both cases, they keep you connected. Connection is crucial for life. You probably think it, you can probably think of a few more um, if you put your mind to it. As I read through this scripture this week, I gained a greater understanding and insight into the power of the link God sent us in his son, the Messiah, Jesus Christ. In fact, he is the only link that will take us to God. In John 14, 6, he did say, I am the way and the truth and the life and no one comes to the Father except through me. So you could say connection is crucial for faith, life and our ultimate future. This finale in Luke that we're looking at today is powerful scripture. It's spoken by Jesus, it's enacted by Jesus, it's directed by him and it's led by Jesus. The resurrected Jesus, the God who was man, the man who was God. And he leads us to a place of witness, a place of promise, a place of commission, a place of blessing, a place where heaven and earth meets. He leads us not so much to a physical place, but to the realisation that it is in him and in his great work, his divine sacrifice on the cross for you, in his death and his being raised up from death to life, that heaven meets earth. Jesus is the link, the only link, and he draws us to him, to place, to the place, to the person, the God where heaven and earth truly overlap. He makes it a place for you. Jesus is the one. The resurrected Jesus who came for them and led them out to the vicinity of Bethany was. He was the same Jesus that was born in the stable, that was welcomed by shepherds. The same Jesus, the 12 year old who hung back at the temple to hold court with the religious experts in the temple and he lost his parents for three days, caused him a lot of anxiety. The same Jesus that the disciples had grown to love and have the greatest friendship with any human being could ever have. The greatest teacher that would ever have sit that they could ever sit at the feet of. The one they had seen heal, the one they had seen cleanse, the one they had seen cast out demons and go beyond all boundaries to forgive sins. The one they had seen and heard so brilliantly win every single argument that would ever be brought against him. The same Jesus that they saw nailed to a cross and die. The one who took on death, who took on sin and all of its evil darkness and allowed it to crush him and to die. The one who cried out, it is finished, as he died and paid the consequences for our sin for us. In our scripture reading today, we see the same Jesus, but a different Jesus. We see the resurrected Jesus, the one who is now the fulfilment of every word that was ever written in the Old Testament. He was the same, but different. He was now with them in a different way, naturally it seems, to the disciples. So Jesus worked divinely 
to reveal himself to them in his new form. He does the same for us today. What he did, he set about opening their minds to the reality of his news through them, witnessing him, but also through every word written in the scriptures. In verse 44, he says, I told you all about how everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms. That's short. That's short. Here are his defining um, as I read this scripture this week. While I was still with you. That was before he rose from death, before he was taken and killed. He says, that's when I was with you. Yet here he was, standing there before them, speaking with them, leading them and directing them. The paradox is, is that he was still with them, but he was with God. But he was with them. This was the new era dawning until he comes again. Now he is still with them, but in a different way. And he notes that a few short verses in our scripture, the hand of his father reigning over his kingdom. And just 10 days after that, the Holy Spirit of God would come down to us and make his dwelling place in the hearts of every earthbound person who believed in him, in his work on the cross. How does the resurrected Jesus be with you? How do you become a Christian? What do you do when you are a Christian? Is he with us? Does he indwell us through us? taking up a set of beliefs, a set of ethical guidelines, the ethical guidelines of Jesus, an ideology that, that you look at that he left behind. Is that what we do? We live in a world that worships uh, choice, it seems. Do we, go, do we go and take a look at the different religions, all of the different belief systems on offer, do we just decide on the Jesus one and take it up? Like boxes of breakfast cereal on the shelves of Coles. Take up one, subscribe to one because it will help us. It will help us navigate this world. We may improve ourselves. Um, we may improve who we are. We may have some success. We may uh, get further. We may find enlightenment, find some happiness find some love add that something to our lives add some zing improve our lives a little if we choose the most spiritually nourishing one for our needs no no the bible never says choose this set of beliefs they are superior they have a 100 percent star rating that beats all of the others so take it up today, become a Christian. You don't take up Christianity. It takes you up. Oh, there's a choice involved, but it's something that comes upon you. Tim Keller described it like this. It's a force. You don't make a choice, but it's always... You do make a choice, but it's always in response to something you feel is arguing with you. Something you feel is coming after you. Something you feel is... I say this is an argument that you need to have. You need to begin having this wrestle. Something making you think about things. Helping you see things that you've never really seen before. Verse 45 says, Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He picked them up and he opened their minds to him and his cross. 
to this space. This space in light of, well, not this cross, a far worse cross than this cross. This is how you experience true Christianity. Jesus Christ is the revealer. The Holy Spirit is a revealer. Jesus is not a passive saviour. He didn't do all of that work on the cross and then just sit back and say, go on, you figure it out. You figure it out in your own time by yourself. You're on your own here. He comes after us. He pursues us. He wants to grab hold of our very souls. He wants to open up new things to us because he's a priest, he's a prophet, he's a redeemer, and he's a revealer. Oh, how we need him to reveal to us. We can't get it on our own. So he helps us. He sends his Holy Spirit to help us. He comes after us. Our scripture today says he opened their minds. Paul says in Ephesians 1.18, I am praying to the Lord that the eyes of your heart will be enlightened so that you can know the things I have told you so you can grasp them. The word opened used in Luke is a particular Greek word. There were two, two Greek words that could be used here. One was anoigo. One was dianoigo. The little dia is the word for through. So, open through. Anoigo means to open something like a door, something that already has a latch, something that already has a provision for opening. You use the Greek word anoigo with a functioning door or a window. Dianoigo, dianoigo doesn't just simply mean to open. It means to break open. It means to bust open. It means to break in. You wouldn't use the word dianoigo with a door unless it was a locked door that you couldn't get through. It means to open up that which was not open before. It allows you access to be able to access things you couldn't access before, to see things that you never could see before. I suppose you could say it also allows in light where there was no light before. Illumination will enter places that are dark where you can't really see. When you see something for the first time, that can be confronting. Jesus, his Holy Spirit, will do that for your mind if you follow him into his kingdom, if you turn your face to him, if you give him your attention when he pursues you. Verses 46, 47 and 48, they come at you. They come at you whenever, whenever you are, a, whether you're a seeker, whether you're a nominal Christian, a new Christian, or one of long standing. One of long standing, that's a nicer way of saying an old one. Verse 46. It is written that Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Jesus' words come at you, referring to the written word, challenging you to sit in his face and allow him to open your minds. Open them more. Let in his light, his knowledge, enlighten and change your life. Breaking open the barriers that have stopped you hearing and understanding its fullness. His Holy Spirit may be breaking mountains open to speak to you in his fullness. He may be tearing a hole in your stony, hardened heart. He may be knocking a hole for a new window in a soft, chip rock wall to shine from a different perspective, to illuminate you more completely. He did it with those people 
He encouraged on the road to Emmaus that we, we looked at last week. He did it with the disciples in the locker room. He did it with the black African eunuch later on in the story. He was always, he has always done it for people who need him, who will sit with him a while. Verse 49 makes it clear, even before they saw him ascend into heaven, that, that it is the Holy Spirit who brings the power and he clothes his people in that power. Then comes verses 50 to 53. And they bring immense joy, hope, and tells me of the, the great purpose of having a relationship with Jesus. 50 to 53, when he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. He took them out to Bethany, the place of his friends, the ones that loved him, the ones that he loved. Remember Bethany? I love Bethany. Remember, remember Mary, Martha, Lazarus, Simon the leper's house, and him being anointed with costly oil. Their hospitality, their special time together in the last week of his earthly ministry, the highs and the lows that they experienced together. The name Bethany even means a house of welcome, a house of figs, house of figs. Over the COVID crisis, my fig tree, I've got a very big fig tree, um, gave me fresh figs, ripe figs, every single day, more than we could eat or give away. It was so, such a comfort. It was God speaking through a fig tree. I think he's done it before in Scripture. Interesting, interesting. I hadn't seen it before. They were standing in the place where he had pursued his friends. He had broken down many barriers and eaten many meals with them. He'd opened their minds and showed them many truths from Scripture. And now here he was, with his disciples, with raised hands, blessing them. And while he was blessing them, he left them as he was taken up into heaven. You could look at this and you could say, there's the link for us. And it's embedded here. It is magnified. Oh yes, the blessing of the resurrected Jesus who can have a relationship with you today. A friendship today continues the blessing in heaven. The blessing flows in heaven and earth from our amazing Lord and Saviour. His name is Jesus, the Son of you, to take you up as his, to give you his life and die a death for you that you just quit to eternal life for you. Push the link. Push the link and let him take you there. Jesus and the cross bought heaven his kingdom down. Heaven and earth meet in him and him alone. He is the only way. No other religion, no other ideology or way of life offers you this. Let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, thank you for pursuing us and taking us up as yours. Thank you for sending your son to do what was impossible for us to do and taking our sins and dealing with them for us. Thank you for coming alongside us and opening our minds to all you have to tell us in your word. May we experience that every day. Thank you for ascending and taking the place of power to reign over us with such love such care in ways 
we have not yet fully recognised. Thank you, Lord, for sending your Holy Spirit and commissioning us to participate with you in taking your gospel to the world. I pray this in his precious name. Amen.
Grand Peninsula missed out on having the Port Arlington Celtic Festival last weekend. So let me bring a Celtic blessing to you this morning as we go. You are the peace of all things calm. You are the place to hide from harm. You are the light that shines in dark. You are the heart's eternal spark. You are the door that's open wide. You are the guest who waits inside. You are the stranger at the door. You are the calling of the poor. You are our Lord and with us still. You are our love, keep us from ill. You are the light, the truth, the way. You are our saviour this very day. Amen. Amen. Go in peace this week.